presentation on the U.S. Marine Corps recruiters of Grand Rapids. I'm Josiah Fogel, this is Amelia Perez, and Paula Derry. And so, we wanted to start off with the U.S. Marine Corps in general. Um, and one of the things, actually the two things that they asked us to do were to help communicate the value of what being a Marine is. And the second thing they asked us to do was to figure out how did they, that they can get themselves in front of more potential prospects. So the U.S. Marine Corps is the first to fight um, uh, part of the United States Armed Forces. They are not part of the Navy, um, and they are a separate entity in themselves. There's about, I think, uh, about 200,000 Marines um, enlisted right now, and about 20,000 in the reserves. And um, they are also, they use the mobility of the Navy to get around and do all that stuff. But they are a separate entity, which is sometimes confusing because they are so, they partner with, uh, with the Navy a lot. So we wanted to uh, just go over the vision and mission of the Marines in general, really quick. And they are dedicated to making Marines. And this is something that if you talk to any Marine or if you know any Marine, they are proud to be a Marine. It is a, a huge honor. Um, and they, they, uh, there's a lot of people that go to boot camp. There's only a few people that get the actual title of being a Marine. And if you ask any Marine, they're once a Marine, always a Marine. The second thing that they, in their vision and mission, is you know, they win our nation's battles. They, are, they pride themselves on being the first out there. They pride themselves on being the um, ex expeditionary readiness force. And they've been doing this all the way since 1775. So they've been doing it for a long time. And their third commitment is to developing quality citizens. And they do this through the core values, which I'm going to talk about in a few seconds. But they're just dedicated to making better people. Which, you know, when you think of the Marines, it's not the first thing that comes to mind. And of course, their motto is Semper Fi, which is always faithful or always loyal. Which also, they're, they're very united around their core values, which is kind of cool. So, and the core values are honor, courage, and commitment. Honor being, they, stay, they have a high level of integrity. They live up to standards. They don't have rules, they have standards. The difference being that you know, you can break rules, but you do not break standards. You live up to them. Um, the commitment of the courage. Courage is what holds any value in place. Like when you are, when, when your value gets tested, courage is what holds it together. And what's, what keeps it from crumbling. And the last one is commitment. And any Marine will tell you, or any, anything, anyone in the armed forces, or U.S. government will tell you that being in the armed forces, especially the Marines, is a big commitment. And when you put on that uniform, when you get that label Marine, you're committing to something big, something bigger than you, which is kind of cool. So we wanted to just so, uh, throw out some highlights from our, our pest analysis. Um, there's a sequester in which Obama planned to reduce um, spending by $500 billion, which is quite a lot. And this is something that affects the U.S. Marine Corps because they usually get the bottom of the barrel, and I'll talk about this later. But they they get a lot of the brunt of these cuts, so that's a huge factor for them. The view of the government can really affect people who join the armed forces, especially the Marines. And if people don't like Obama, if people don't like even the local government, it it's, it skews them away from joining and being. Part of the armed forces, and they, like I said, get the bottom of the barrel. They have to. Um, actually, it's a pride point for Marines is that they get the last after the army and the navy. They get the bottom of the barrel, and they use it to the best of their ability, and they produce phenomenal results, which is a pride point, which is kind of cool. Some highlights from their SWAT um, are: this is actually something that the Marine recruiters told us. And it's 88% of VPs from Fortune 500 companies are Marines or were Marines. 
And it's kind of funny because comparing that to, if you look at VPs of other Fortune, Fortune 500 companies, can you take a guess of how many of those are from the Army, Navy, and other armed forces? Zero percent, which is, which is kind of cool, which kind of shows that they're, they're in it to lead, to make leaders, to develop people. Uh, the Marines have the highest level of physical fitness. They have a 13-week boot camp, uh, very intense. And like I said, there's a lot of people that go out that are recruits that don't become Marines. Um, a weakness that um, the Marine recruit recruiters here at Grand Rapids specifically have is that they do rotations every three years. So we actually met with um, two of the recruiters, and they live they they have an office right at the Beltline, and we talked with them, and so those people that we talked to actually rotate every three years. So it's kind of a weakness because when you're developing relationships with the community and with the school district and with colleges, transferring every three years, you have to make those new relationships again. So it's, it's a weakness. And another threat is the speed at which information travels, especially bad information. Um, because you know, if one person has a very bad experience, goes to, goes to boot camp and just leaves, typically people that have bad experiences go for the, the two-week experience or the one-week experience and don't, and, and they have a lot to complain about because they don't understand the whole picture. They don't understand the 13-week boot camp. They don't understand the commitment, the honor, and the courage that you get from being a Marine, uh, which is who they are. And so we want to just want to talk about what being a Marine is. And so the first thing, oops. When you think of a Marine, I'm sure that almost all of you think of guy with a gun. You know, just, a whole bunch of guys with guns. And that's so far from true. And actually, when we were talking, the Marine crews here in Grand Rapids, um, Sergeant Jeffers told us it's more like running a city. Think of what goes into running a city like Grand Rapids. You need accountants, you need doctors, you need nurses, you need managers, you need leaders, you need all these different, different parts of the city to make it work, you have to have police and all that too. And that's how the Marines work. Yes, everyone is trained as a rifleman, and they all can do that as part of, as part of why they are the first to fight, because everyone knows how to use a weapon. But at the same time, they all have their specific MOS, um, which is their specific um, thing that, with which they are good at, and they focus on to add value to the whole unit. Um, and so we wanted to, to help other people understand these, what they stand for, and who they are, and what they do. So we came up with two marketing strategies. Um, the first being our Facebook strategy, which we would create a, which we actually did create, and we want to hand over a Facebook uh, group for the recruiters here at Grand Rapids, and a Facebook page. Currently, there's already a um, U.S. Marine Corps page. And as a whole, but we wanted to create a specific one here in Grand Rapids, and we'll talk about that. Paul will talk about that. And our second um, marketing strategy is a guest lecture. And this idea is that um, the Marine crews here in Grand Rapids would go into schools and add value um, to students through um, teaching them what the Marines stand for and those values that they stand on. So Amelia is going to talk about the guest lecture strategy. Okay, so um, our guest lecture strategy would be three lectures given in succession um, to Grand Rapids High School juniors and seniors. Uh, the idea of them is that it would be a progression. Um, the first one would be given the first half of junior year, the second one the second half of junior year, and the third in the third half, <coughs> or in the first half of senior year. Um, and then they would be used as a catalyst. The idea would be to what the Marines are about, what their goals are, who they perceive themselves as, um, and to change some of the perceptions that are out there about Marines right now. Uh, we see this as being highly beneficial because it will not only um, change the perceptions of students, but also reach the Greater Great Rapids community and start a conversation. It's meant to be a discussion um, and a way that they can 
more fully uh, engaged students in the area. So we thought each lecture <coughs> would focus on a core value. So again, we have courage, honor, commitment, um, and these would kind of bring the idea of the Marines as more than just infantrymen. Um, and so it really is about creating value and just uh, again that dialogue. Um, so what we've done is we've created a sample lecture. So we'll go with courage. Um, it would be a 30-minute lecture, and it would start with the Marine recruiter coming into a school. They would meet with the teacher beforehand. Um, and then as students would filter in, they would you know, introduce themselves. Uh, they'd start with an introduction, maybe an icebreaker game, kind of set the stage. Um, and then they would have a time where they would ask, so what do you think of the US Supreme Court? Like, what do you think that is? What does that mean to you? That's a way to get the students talking, kind of get the discussion going, also put some of those perceptions out so they know what they're dealing with. Um, and then they'd ask about the specific uh, core values. So what does courage mean to you? How does that play a role in the life of the life of people you look up to? Um, after that, they would give the lecture on it. So this is what courage is for learning. This is how we find it beneficial and how it influences us and how it grows us and how it makes quality leaders in the Marine Corps. Um, then there would be a time where they would ask questions, so about the Marine Corps or about the specific virtue, what, um, what do you people think about the lecture, that sort of thing. Um, and then they would have a closing. Uh, during the closing, they would have an information card <coughs> that they could pass out and people could fill this out. Um, and then the Marines could contact them later. Uh, and this would also be a way that they could invite them to the Facebook group and page, which Paul will talk about more. Um, but it's kind of that connector and creating the next step. So it's not just a lecture, but it keeps it in their mind. Um, and then they can do a follow-up later. So uh, how would it be implemented? Um, the first part would be creating a lesson plan, and this would happen over the summer. So they would decide what each lesson would look like, uh, each virtue, and then they would also have to make these information cards. Um, we want them to do this before meeting with the administration so that they could present exactly what they would, what it would look like when they go into the school. Um, and they could show that information card so they know what they'd be asking the students. Uh, lastly, we create a two-year timeline to kick it off. So in the first year, they would only be giving um, lectures to juniors because, again, it's a progression, so we don't see the full value uh, being implemented or gained by students if we started this senior year. So the first year would just be for juniors, and it could be a testing stage also. So you can see how it's received, maybe tailor it um, for the next year. Then those juniors would rise to be seniors, and they get the third lecture. Um, and during that year as well, we'd start with the next juniors. So after the first year, we have it as it would be intended to go. Um, so we came up with three ways to evaluate this. The first way is how many students were reached. So how many students, and how many classrooms, and how many schools. Um, we see this as being a kind of an improvement from what they have right now, because they don't have to be let into all schools. They, there's kind of a cap or a minimum of how much schools can let them in. So this would be a way that they could communicate their value better and maybe get their reach a little broader than what it is right now. Um, then we have students who would fill out the information cards. So how many students actually choose to follow up? And these would be given at every lecture so they could fill them out on the second one or the third one. So we're building that relationship. We're giving them more opportunity to um, choose, choose to fill this out and to be connected. And then finally, how many students who join the Marine cite this as being influential in that process and that decision? Now we're going to talk about Facebook. Okay, um, for our Facebook strategy, we chose to create a Facebook group and a Facebook page. Um, the main reason for doing this is so um, we could give the U.S. Marines <coughs> a greater outreach to people in the Grand Rapids region. And, um, 
also to stay in contact with potential candidates. Just as what I really just talked about, um, if we have the guest lecture and uh, we have we meet different people and they decide to like follow up um, using this Facebook group and the Facebook page is a way to stay in contact with them. And also, um, looking at the growing influence of social media right now, um, this creating this group and this page specifically for Grand Rapids is going to help and um, um, giving the Marines a chance. And also, um, just going to more details about the group objectives. Um, the first, first one is to connect and follow up with prospects from lectures, just as what we just talked about. Um, just being in contact with them and then like following up with them and knowing exactly what they want. And also, to use this as a medium to connect mentors and mentees. So there are people who are actually interested in being a part of the U.S. Marines, but, um, but if they have like, a mentor or someone they could look up to, maybe even an ex-Marine, someone who's like a doctor or a professor, um, that person, they can use that person to learn more in various aspects of their lives. And also the third part is to use as a medium to meet specific candidates who are in demand at that point in time. When we talked to um, Sergeant Jeffers, he told us at the times that they need specific people. So they might need like maybe a female journalist. You know, using this group and this page could help them in like accelerating that and getting to meet those young people. For our Facebook page, the major objective is just to increase popularity in the Grand Rapids region. Um, and um, doing that could also you know, help them give information to the community on lectures, events, and charity works that they have planned. And for the implementation and continuity of this, at the end of our, our implementation, we expect that the group and page to have at least 2,000 um, likes and members respectively. So pretty much we expect it to grow and we expect it to be really, really active. And um, we expect a continued use of the page as a tool of building um, communication and building rapport between not just candidates, but between like fellow Marines and you know, people in general as well. And um, lastly, um, we expect this page and group to be used to build a powerful social media base in the Grand Rapids region and surrounding areas. <laughs> so, um, all in all, we have these core values of courage, honor, and commitment, and we see these being displayed through the use of the social media. And one of the things that we, we were thinking about as we were putting these both ideas together is we wanted to do something that wasn't going to be like, in your face, join the Marines, but rather we wanted to say, here's who we are. We want to say, we want to get as many people as we can to join, but the, the, the goal of the lecture is not to go into high schools and, and throw the Marines at people. It's to show people that they are a place that has these core values of, of courage, honor, and commitment. And um, we just thought it was a great way to communicate that value. A contingency plan that we had um, involved uh, if the lectures, we currently have 24 schools here in the Grand Rapids area that the Marines go to um, every year. And so the contingency plan was actually that if they weren't allowed to give these lectures, because um, that, that could be a possibility that schools would say no, or that a majority of the schools would say no. Um, and if that happened, um, the, our Facebook, the, the group and the page would still be a very effective method um, of communicating and adding value to the greater Grand Rapids area, and to potential prospects. Um, another thing, another contingency is to really promote the U.S. Marine Corps YouTube page, uh, which is actually something that the U.S. Marine Corps in general um, has been doing very well with. Um, they have a YouTube page with videos um, promoting different aspects of being a Marine. Um, but they're very well done videos. Um, and the last thing is the U.S. Marine Corps has its own page, like I was saying earlier, and they update our, they throw articles on there every like every two days or three days um, with motivational quotes, with um, stories, pictures, um, and there are thousands of people who like that page, and that's kind of the idea that where we got um, everything that we we sort of wanted to see happening in this Grand Rapids area is that dialogue between the U.S. Marine Corps recruiters, the U.S. Marines, and Grand Rapids. 
and the community, the high schoolers, college students, parents, and former Marines. And set the five. So thank you very much. Any questions? Do you see any problems with uh, parents being a little upset that their kids are being talked to by the Marines and giving information in those classrooms for those lectures without their parental consent? Yes and no. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things that we were talking about in our early planning stage was that um, the meeting with the principals and the headmaster of the school, or the teachers specifically, um, would be very focused on not promoting joining the Marines, not promoting, um, like I was saying, be a Marine, but rather promoting like things that help build life skills, like like commitment. And when, when the when the teachers and the parents hear that the Marines are coming to talk about commitment, that's something that we thought, you know, when when a parent hears that, that they're promoting being committed to school, being committed to your family, being committed to like things that you are involved in in life, that that'd be a easy, that'd be a better way and more accepted way of sort of selling the idea. Does that make sense? Yes. Any other questions? <laughs>